Hi everyone, my name is Joy Owens and I'm the Education Manager at the Elephant Sanctuary in Tennessee. Today we are celebrating World Elephant Day by talking with a few of our international partners from around the world. Through a generous bequest from the Mark Hopkins Shell Trust, the sanctuary collaborates with, collaborates with and supports international organizations on four continents, Africa, Europe, Asia, and South America, with a focus on elephant-human conflict, anti-poaching, habitat preservation, research and field work, rescue and rehabilitation, improved management and care in captivity, and veterinary care. Joining me now is Dave Morgan of Wild Welfare. Uh, thanks for talking with me today, Dave. A very great pleasure, Joy. Uh, so Dave, can you start by telling us a little bit about Wild Welfare, how it was started, and uh, what work you guys do? Um, Wild Welfare is a, a UK-based charity. We are now seven years old. Uh, originally started up by myself and uh, my colleague, Dr. David Jones, who, is, uh, who was at the time CEO of North Carolina Zoo in the States, um, but is now retired. In the seven years, we've grown quite substantially since then. We, we now have a total of five staff members. Most of those are based in the UK, uh, except for me. I'm, I'm based in South Africa. <laughs> but um, our, the main thrust of our work actually is that we're, we're actually a fairly unique animal welfare NGO in that we, um, we focus exclusively on wild animals in captivity in zoos, in sanctuaries, in rescue centers, and that sort of thing. And our main concern there is uplifting the welfare standards uh, of uh, the, those animals are under in, in facilities like that. The main thrust of our work is in South America, specifically Brazil, and around various countries in Southeast Asia and in North and West Africa. Um, most of our work at this stage is with zoos and other similar facilities. Uh, but we have worked with sanctuaries and, and rescue centers in the past as well. And the Elephant Sanctuary in Tennessee, of course, is, is one of our partners in a particular program that we have. Great. Uh, we'll get into that in just a moment. But it sounds like you work with a lot of captive animals. So what part of your work specifically um, deals with elephants in captivity? Well, a number of the facilities that we work with obviously keep elephants themselves, both African and Asian elephants. And um, invariably in Southeast Asia, of course, um, their main policy for elephant management is free contact, uh, which uh, of course is a little bit antithetical in some respects to overall elephant welfare. So we are seeing situations where elephants are chained on a, on a regular basis. And of course, uh, a lot of use is made of the ankus, the, the bull hook, um, in controlling elephants under, under circumstances like that. I'm not sure if your viewers are familiar with the distinction between free contact and protected contact. Um, they're two different elephant management uh, regimes. Uh, free contact um, effectively involves the, the animal keeper sharing the same space as the elephant. And under circumstances like that, the keeper obviously has to maintain a level of control over the animal. And they usually do that through negative reinforcement techniques and intimidation. Protected contact, on the other hand, as, as I'm, I know that you're well familiar with, uh, really involves um, some sort of barrier or distance between the keeper and the elephant. Uh, the keeper makes no attempt to in, in, insert himself, herself, into the elephant social context um, and only positive reinforcement training, positive reinforcement techniques are, are, are used to, to work with the animal there. And under those circumstances, of course, the elephant's participation then is entirely voluntary. So a lot of your work is getting um, places to move to a protected contact system or is it getting them to work in more of that positive reinforcement, or both? Well, it's a little bit of both. <clears throat> in Southeast Asia, um, the free contact management methodology has been pursued for centuries and is, is very culturally ingrained in the way they manage elephants in places like Thailand, Vietnam, and Indonesia. Um, as a consequence of that, we're not going to be able to 
persuade them to change their, their management style overnight. So what we try to look at inst instead is, is something of a combination of both free and protected contact. Uh, and, and certainly with a major emphasis on, on positive reinforcement training. Wonderful. So can you tell us um, about a specific project or initiative that is supported through this international partner program uh, by the Elephant Sanctuary? Well, in this particular case, the Elephant Sanctuary, I'm very pleased to be able to say, is supporting our work in, uh, in East Malaysia in the little country called Sabah, uh, which is in Borneo. And there we're working with the Sabah Department of Wildlife who operates a facility called Lakawi Wildlife Park. The park itself is, uh, if you like, a sort of zoo stroke rescue center. Most of the animals in it are come from human wildlife contact, uh, conflict. So they are in effect rescue animals. Um, and they currently have 12 elephants there and with the exception, I think, of two of them who were born there, all the rest are, are, um, are victims of human wildlife conflict and, uh, and have come uh, directly out of the wild as rescue animals. So with the support of, of the Elephant Sanctuary in Tennessee, what we're doing at the moment now is actually moving that particular group of 11. Now there are actually 12 because there was a new rescue now a couple of months ago. Um, we're moving this particular group into a protected contact management regime. Saba does not have a long-standing history of, of elephant management, as you would otherwise see in places like Thailand, for example's sake. So they, they don't have a necessarily cultural impetus to remain with free, free contact management styles. And... Um, they have, of course, their own unique subspecies of elephant in Borneo, uh, the Bornean Asian elephant, which, if you like, is a, a sort of dwarf elephant. They don't get very big. Um, even the bulls only stand about two meters at the shoulder. So they're, they're not frightfully large elephants, um, but elephants nonetheless, and um, have to be treated with, with the respect, of course, that, that, they, that they deserve. So our long range program there being supported by the Elephant Sanctuary is, is, is aimed at moving these animals into protected contact. Um, now that's a very easy sentence to sort of trot off, move them into protected contact. Um, it takes a lot more than just saying it out loud, of course. Uh, this is a very involved process. It involves training the staff um, in positive reinforcement techniques and, and of course, the principles of protected contact and why we do it. And at the same time, of course, training the elephants, because this is not something they're initially used to. So we're envisaging this program taking about two years at the moment, but we're not stopping just there. As we've gone into partnership um, with the Elephant Sanctuary, the Sabah Department of Wildlife, and a local on the ground NGO called Seratu Atai, um, and that part of the program is actually looking at wild elephants. And Seratu Atai specialize in, in the mitigation of human elephant conflict in the oil palm plantations. So at the same time that we're doing the, the work at Lakawi with the captive ele elephants, our intention is, um, is to develop a program with wild elephants, for performing wild elephant monitoring to be able to alert local communities to the, the, the presence of elephants or movement of elephants into their areas, and also to be conducting a series of workshops on human elephant conflict mitigation. And the main thrust of this actually is, is an attempt really to reduce the number of elephants, if not stop it altogether, of the necessity of bringing uh, injured, poisoned, or um, otherwise orphaned elephants into captivity, the victims of human wildlife conflict. So it's a long range project. Um, the total project duration will be about three years um, uh, all up, possibly a little longer. Um, so there are a lot of moving parts to, to this particular project. And as soon, of, co as soon of, of course, as the, the pandemic and the restrictions therein lift, we'll certainly get back to work with that as soon as we can.
Yeah, absolutely. So it, it does sound like a long range project, but are there any positive outcomes you've seen so far um, that you want to share with us? Well, absolutely. We've, um, we've actually been back to Sabah twice in, in the last 14 months uh, prior, unfortunately, to COVID-19. We were due to go back out in March, but um, that has been postponed for the moment. But in the, the, the duration of those, those two visits over the last 14 months, um, we've seen a number of major improvements um, uh, at Lukawi Wildlife Park. Um, the, uh, the main enclosure itself has been renovated. Um, and this allows them to move two groups of, rotate two groups of elephants in and out of, of the larger outdoor enclosure, including two of the mature bulls that they have there. They have a total of five bulls altogether, and two of them are now over 20 years old. And up until then, these, these elephants, unfortunately, these particular two bulls were spending their lives on, on chains in, 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 in the barn um, because they could not be worked with. But now, with the advent of, of the new enclosure rehabilitation, uh, these guys are being allowed out now so that they can associate with the cows um, and get something of, of some sort of social interaction going. Um, there are three younger bulls. Um, we started training those in, in protected contacts the last time we were there. Um, and they, they have been responding beautifully. Not only were we training the elephants at the time, but we were, of course, also training the staff. And uh, we, we are obviously keeping very, very close contact with, with the, the personnel at Lukawi Wildlife Park. And they assure us that they're keeping going with the protected contact training and the positive reinforcement training with th these three young bulls at the moment. So despite the hiatus and the, us not necessarily being able to get there right now, work is still nonetheless continuing. That's really great. That's awesome. Um, so you mentioned human elephant uh, conflict a couple of times. Would you consider that the greatest threat facing elephants or is there um, a greater issue facing elephants today, and what can we all do to tackle that? Well, if we're talking in global terms, there are, there are any number of reasons why uh, elephants are under extreme pressure at the moment, and that ranges from the ivory trade um, all the way down to crop raiding animals causing human human wildlife conflict. So the you know the, there is quite a range of, of, of reasons for this. And some, from the, the point of view of the general public, well, the first one, of course, goes almost goes without saying, please don't buy ivory. Um, ivory poaching, particularly in Central Africa right now, is increasing at a rate, especially under the pandemic, uh, that, is, that is exponential. So we, we do know that um, that coming out of, of, of Central and West Africa right now, there are quite literally tons of, of ivory. And these, of course, are being poached from the third elephant species, the forest elephant. And that is of major concern right now. So obviously, please don't buy ivory. Um, and I think that, that more than anything else and, and, and spreading that particular message is, is uh, is one of the greatest things that any member of the public could, could do at this point. All right, uh, so last question. Uh, where can people find more about wild welfare online if they wanna learn more about you guys? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our website is, is very, very straightforward. That's www.wildwelfare.org. And uh, the easiest way to do it really is just type uh, wild wealth in, into any internet search engine. You'll be taken directly to our page and all information on our activities, our partnerships, our involvement with the Elephant Sanctuary uh, and other partners is, is, all, is all portrayed there. Perfect. All right. Well, thanks again for joining me on the call. Um, for everyone viewing at home, if you want to continue the celebration of World Elephant Day, you can visit elephants.com slash World Elephant Day. You're going to find family activities, crafts, and more ways to take action for elephants there. Uh, but thanks again for joining me, Dave. A great pleasure, Joy. Mm -hmm.